Well, it's the week after a loss, and we're breaking down exactly what happened. It's the end, maybe, of the 49ers playoff push. Uh, Playoffs? And we're here to tell you what happened against the Colts because it wasn't the run game. It wasn't going away from misdirections uh, or misdirection plays. It was third downs. It was the fact that the Niners could not get anything going on third downs. There were 10 conversion attempts from the 49ers. There was 11 on the stat sheet, but one was a kneel down. We're going to take a look at a few of the plays and outline exactly what went wrong on third down for the 49ers because five of those 10 third downs were five yards or fewer. They were manageable, and the Niners could not convert on manageable downs. We'll start in the first quarter. It is third and 10, and this is a play. You know, when, when you need something big, when you need 10 yards, who are you going to go to? Muhammad Sanu. That's the name <laughs> you were thinking, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, we'll, again, kind of let it run here, but uh, definitely when you look at, at kind of where Jimmy's eyes are, and we'll actually let it go to the end zone view um, here so you can kind of get a look at, at where he's looking right after the snap, and it's definitely middle of the field. I mean, right there, you can look at that stripe. He's looking at Muhammad Sanu. So, I mean, that is option number one on this play. And, yeah, it just uh, doesn't feel like maybe the guy that I would be looking to target um, is, is my first option on third down plays right now. But, hey, uh, but I, I think when you look at the overall, um, you know, play here, and, and this is kind of something that uh, showed up really on a good chunk of, of these third down plays, especially the ones that were more manageable, right, uh, is, is the man coverage from Indianapolis here. And so they, they played uh, man coverage on about half of these 10 plays. And the ones that they went more zone um, tended to be the longer down and distance ones. So it was when, when they just wanted to play a nice soft shell and, and kind of force the throw underneath. But whenever that you had more realistic conversion attempts, um, they were in, in man coverage here. And you can see pretty much across the board here. I mean, Jimmy doesn't have a lot to go to. I mean, uh, you know, hasty looks open there, but I mean, he's well short of the sticks and, and they're going to have plenty of time to tackle that. The one guy, I mean, you could look to Ayuk that's at the top of the screen there when he's coming back on this curl route, there's a little bit of space there. I think, uh, you know, a really good throw an on time, accurate throw, uh, could probably fit it in there, but that safety is also kind of waiting and, and looking to drive on that. So just kind of not a lot of options here for Jimmy. And, and we talked about on the podcast, how, there was a little bit of everything that kind of went wrong on these plays. And this was one where we see just really nobody getting open, right? No, not a lot of quality options for Jimmy to be able to get the ball out here. Yeah. And they even get a little bit of a switch release because you, you ask yourself, okay, the, the Colts are playing about 40% main coverage on third down coming into the game. So maybe you've got a little bit of help there. If, if you're expecting man coverage and you get a switch release, right? And that's, that's something that you do to try to beat man coverage, but it, you know, it doesn't help a whole lot. You, you see Sanu, actually, he does get a little bit of leverage, but that's that's just a good play from the corner to like kind of have that leverage and then just not get beat. He keeps he keeps tracking it. And yep. it probably doesn't help that Sanu is not your most explosive athlete at this point in his career out of his break. I think if you got a, if you have a, a more explosive athlete coming out, maybe you're able to get that. But at this point, you're having, you know, an older, not superior athlete there going up against a, a shift your corner and, and that's what's going to happen. And now you're trying to throw a sideline toe tapper to uh Jamichael hasty. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, the corner here, right? I mean, this is the benefit of playing two man, which they are on, on this play here. And uh, you know, the underneath defenders being able to kind of sit on the shorter and intermediate breaking stuff, right? Because they know that they've got some safety help deep. And so yeah, corner does a good job of, of kind of getting underneath this route and, and keeping that leverage, uh, you know, throughout the the route here, at least as far as Jimmy's looking at it and considering throwing to it. So now we get to the next play that we'll look at. This is the second quarter. It's third and four, one of the shorter distance third downs the Niners had in this game. And this is a play that should be converted. You've got Jamichael Hasty, who gets open on the play. He is wide open, and Jimmy makes the right decision. He throws there because the Colts and their defense, they're worried about Debo. They have bracketed Debo. They've got inside-out coverage on Debo Samuel. And that means that on third and four, you've got some soft space. And, and Jimmy goes to the right place. But execution issues are going to get the Niners at the right guard spot. A place that's been bugging them 
uh, really since the Super Bowl year, since 2019, maybe even 2018. I forget who the hell was the tackle back then, but <laughs> Jimmy ends up on his back or the guard back then. Uh, Jimmy ends up on his back and they don't convert. Yeah, so we'll see uh, again here where Jimmy's looking on this play, right? And it is to Debo, I mean, which is definitely, I mean, I, I think something we've seen with this team over the last few years is they do tend to, and Jimmy specifically tends to kind of lock on to a guy, whether that's Kittle or, or now Debo, um, in some of these big third down situations. So you, so you can see right there, like he's absolutely looking to Debo first. He sees that you have the safety coming and sitting on it and, and they're kind of playing inside out on that. So he, he does a good job to move away, but yeah, you see the, the pressure here from, uh, that's allowed by Brunskill. And, uh, by the time that he has a chance to come off that and get to hasty, who does a great job of, of creating some separation here and is, is very much going to have plenty of space to make this catch, uh, and, and get a first down and get a conversion. But Jimmy just gets hit before he can get it out. And, uh, and it doesn't make it there. And what a terrible stunt pickup that that this is i mean th this isn't just 94 you know kind of jumping the gap and trying to get in there like it's it's a stunt you've got defo trying to work behind him and it, it just everything about that is just so bad his head's over his feet he's off balance he gives up the gap anyway but let's say that he were to manage to to get stuck on 94 for some reason and mash him into the center into alex mack now defo's running free at right at jimmy and, and you know maybe that gives him a little extra time to get the throw off but like, yeah. it's just so bad it's so bad not not ideal not what you're looking for here and and yeah i mean i think this is one uh that that is very difficult to pin on jimmy right like i think he does the right thing he, he does a good job of coming off debo quickly once he sees the double team uh finding a good matchup and and one that is going to be in their favor and, and gets open um but just doesn't have time and it, it's tough when you don't have time to throw to anything but your first read yeah, and it's it's middle pressure too. So what's he gonna do? Step up into the pocket, right into yeah. the guy who's running at his face? Can't do it, man. Uh, next play, third quarter. It's third and eight. This one you can pin on Jimmy Garoppolo because there is an open receiver past the sticks with some space, and it's just good old Jimmy catchable and accurate at this point, trending more towards the inaccurate than the catchable, and it ends up on the ground. Yeah, not not very catchable here, and um, again, more man coverage from the Colts, and and so they're looking to get. I mean, this is a a, a good route concept for this situation. So it's third and eight. Um, they're going to get you know sort of this three level stretch up there where you've got the outside guy uh, up top that's going to kind of clear things out. You've got Dwelly that's going to run uh, the out route there just beyond the sticks, and then you've got the underneath route by Sanu there, and this is your advantageous route against man coverage, right? So that, that intermediate route is the one that you're looking for. That's going to have the best chance to get open, uh, as a man beater. And it's there. I mean, Dwelly is, is able to get some separation and, uh, the throw just isn't here and you can't pin this one on pressure, right? He's got, I mean, even though it's, it's maybe coming like, and it's, it's going to be there if he holds onto the ball too much longer. Um, it, it definitely has plenty of time to, to get this ball out and to get it out accurately. Right. But just, doesn't even give him a chance here. Like it, this is one where he has enough separation on the route that you don't need to be perfect to get a conversion here. Like this is one, like just make it catchable. And as long as Dwelly can, can pull it in, like you're looking at a first down here. Um, but miss doesn't give him an opportunity and uh, punt teams out again. And, and you think to yourself, okay, it's raining, right? He's got two gloves on. He's Jimmy two gloves in this game. This is, it's going to be <laughs> difficult. And, and uh, you, you look at the other side, we're not going to put any cards in Went Carson Wentz film on this because, you know, we don't want any kind of ocular assault charges, but it, you know, he was still able to get the ball into the vicinity of his receivers such that they could either get a pass interference or complete a complete an actual pass. So yes, cut Jimmy some slack for the weather, but also the weather was disproportionately affecting half of the quarterbacks in this game. And that's also something to take into account as well. Yep. Now we get to another third quarter play. It's third and five. And this one is going to be a strip sack that is going to be on Jalen Moore. Jalen Moore had, you know, a fine game, you know, fine in like the okay kind of way, not fine as in like, you know, delectable piece of delicious, you know, dinner food. Um, but this was, I think, probably his worst rep. Um, he just gets beat around the edge. And it, Jimmy's actually able to get out of the hit, which is awesome. But it just stops everything up and it gives the defensive line enough time to get back to him. And then it's a fumble. And now it's not only not a conversion, but now you give the ball back to the Colts. 
Right. I mean, you, you really have the the trifecta on this play. So, I mean, you have obviously you talked about Jalen Moore, and we'll get to him in a second. Um, but nobody's open either. So you have, uh, you know, the receivers slash coverage here is is a problem for the 49ers because he doesn't have anywhere to throw the ball. So even if the pressure isn't here, like he's got nowhere to go. Dwelly's fallen down. Um, Debo on on kind of that slant, which is probably the guy that they're looking to get here on this little, little now route that they've got. Um, he isn't open. If he tries to throw that, that's getting, you know, probably pick six the other direction. Um, and then, you know, your other route there is, is really just a clear out and, um, isn't really going to be a significant part of the progression. So, I mean, it's, it's tough there. He doesn't have anywhere to go with the ball. You're probably best case scenario looking, uh, to get it out as a a check down to hasty there and hope that he can make somebody miss and, and pick up the first down after the catch. Um, then you of course have Jalen Moore and, giving up the quick pressure, which kind of throws off, uh, you know, the whole timing of the play and, and any potential option for him to try to make something out of this. And then you have Jimmy just not being able to take care of the ball, right? Like this is, maybe it's a little bit weather related, but like you got to hold on to the ball in the pocket. Like this is his responsibility. Um, yes, he has pressure coming down on him. He's got to know that. Like he's got to know that at this point, once he gets that initial pressure uh, around the edge here, that like, guys are coming for him, right? Like that guy's going to be coming back around. Other guys are going to be getting free at that point because it's been longer in the play and and he's got to be able to hold on to this. And so, yeah, you just kind of have things at every single level breaking down on this play and, and it ends up as a turnover. Two quick things. One here in the end zone view. I didn't notice this when we were watching this first time, but man, 97 looks like he straight up Superman punches that ball. Like it looks like he sees it when he's coming around the edge. And he just jumps and like just completely whacks it. Um, so that's just funny. I hadn't noticed that before. But one thing to note, uh, and you can do from the end zone view or the sideline view, but you've got the linebacker who's here mugged up in the A gap, and he dr- jumps out. He drops out, and he is looking to cut under that underneath route. That's I mean, he is yep. floating to Jimmy's eyes. Something similar happened on the first play with Sanu where you had a linebacker who was kind of floating in that underneath area and they're just going to go right to the underneath intermediate kind of middle of the field areas teams know where the Niners and where Jimmy is going to throw and they're starting to put linebackers in that area Jimmy Garoppolo had a dropped interception in this game uh, where he threw it straight to a linebacker that was dropping and and I think teams are going to they know that's where he wants to throw and they're going to put defenders especially linebackers there to try to exploit uh, that that area of the field now we get to the fourth quarter. It's third and three. And this is, man, this is just, it's a little bit of unlucky play, but it's also not a great throw when you're getting out to Debo Samuel and it just kind of bounces off his chest, corners in a good spot, ends up being an interception. Another short distance third down that the 49ers cannot convert. Yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, a good job from Indianapolis here in, in terms of their setup pre snap. So we've been talking about how in a lot of these plays, they've been playing a lot of man coverage, right? And and I think here pre-snap, you get a man coverage look, right? I think you can maybe take uh, a a look at that bunch. And if you're being, you know, really discerning there, you can pick out a couple things that uh, might give you a little bit more of an idea that they're going to be dropping out into zone. But you could also just kind of say that you've got the bunch over there and this is just going to be how they're playing the bunch. So overall though, they're, they're really giving you a pretty strong cover one pre-snap look here. And then they're going to drop out and play zone behind it. And so what it looks like is Jimmy basically gets his pre-snap read, right? We know that he's going to want to lock on to one of his top options, uh, you know, on, on these third down situations. So they've got Debo isolated up there. Looks like he's going to be one-on-one with the cornerback and, and that's where he goes. And he just, has eyes focused on there. He doesn't really confirm coverage after the the, the snap. Um, and so, you know, Rhodes is in, in good coverage here and uh, and is able to, like, get his hand in there and make it a difficult catch for, for Deba to bring in. But if you look at the bottom, uh, Muhammad Sanu is running free in the middle of the field. Like, and part of that maybe, you know, I mean, I, I think the safety is overly aggressive because he's watching Jimmy's eyes. And as soon as Jimmy opens up left... Um, he's pretty much opening and, and running that way as well. So yeah, it, as long as he's not opening and looking directly at Sanu after the snap, like that and leading basically that that safety over that direction, I mean, Sanu's open for a touchdown here. And, and this is just, I think, one of those situations where 
third and three, you only need a few yards. He's really hyper focused on on getting the ball to his best player and and isn't really diagnosing what the defense is trying to do post snap and and looking for the best option. And then he leaves the ball inside. And it's just it's not far enough inside that it's an immediate pick six situation, but it's far enough inside that it lets an already in good position corner make a better play on the football. Um, and then, you know, you just get a little bit of unluckiness from the, the way the ball bounces per se, but that ball, if, if you've listened to us and you've seen these videos, you know, like the Cardinal sin for throwing to the sideline is hanging that ball inside. It's just, yep. it's just on that inside shoulder. You want that to be outside. And if that ball's outside, maybe you don't give the corner his left hand to be able to pop that ball up. Um, you know, and, and those are the margins at this point that, that maybe turn this from, you know, a, a good Debo catch and a continued drive or, an interception that, you know, really helped change the game. Yeah, I, I think absolutely. Like this is one where even all of those things from a process standpoint that, uh, you know, went wrong and, and maybe you can say it's a questionable decision that he throws it here in the first place. An accurate throw here probably makes none of that matter, right? If he puts this up and away out to the sideline, like it, it's going to be tough for anybody but Debo to bring that in. And so, yeah, I think absolutely the accuracy again here. Uh, is going to be problematic and um, it just kind of was one of those days on third down like I said a little bit of everything going wrong on on most of these plays here yeah so overall you look at what happened against the Colts and and you know the run game them not sticking with the run game them not sticking with those uh, misdirection plays got a lot of play why didn't you run more boot action plays that might be something I think that, that definitely is something to consider but Overall, it was just the way the team executed on third down. When Shanahan talks about execution issues, he's he's right. He's got an issue at right guard, which he's had for a couple of years now. He's got a quarterback that's inaccurate. He's got a rookie that is playing at tackle. Uh, and, and I think overall, you've got a, a good plan from the Colts. And you put all that in the bag. And you've got a team that can't convert on really convertible third downs. Downs they should be converting. And it does not allow the team to get in a rhythm. It does not allow them to continue to to kind of pound away on the ground and they gave up too many opportunities on the flip side for the Colts. And and that's how you lose to a team like the Colts. Yeah. I, I mean, I think a lot of those other things that people are, are pointing to that you mentioned, you know, about the offense, it's hard to do those things when you can't stay on the field, right? Like I think f- for the most part, the run game, like was they, they failed to get the explosives after that first drive, um, but it was still largely like decent. Like it, it was, yeah. they were, they were picking up five, six yards on a lot of those carries. And, and so I don't really think that that was the the problem. And again, with play action and, and the boot stuff, it's hard to do that. You can't just come out and every first down decide that you're going to run a boot play, right? Like eventually they're going to yeah. pick up on it. And so you need a drive where you have multiple first downs, right? You have multiple opportunities to work those things in. And, and they just didn't have it because they couldn't stay on the field on these third down plays. And it was just, uh, it was tough. Yeah. And I think you're going to see teams. I mean, Jimmy, it, it, it wasn't just in this game by any stretch. Like he has had issues beating man coverage. And I think the 49ers right now aren't really beat or, or excuse me, aren't really, um, built to, to be able to defeat man coverage all that well, because you have, offensive players that aren't really getting open consistently or they're they're not being featured right I think like Debo doesn't isn't going to be a huge separation guy but obviously he doesn't need a lot of it to be able to make catches in in certain situations I mean Ayuk is the guy that you would hope would would kind of thrive there um Kittle when he comes back but like right now they, they don't have when you're having to draw plays for Muhammad Sanu on some of these crucial downs like that's not a good sign for where your offense is at right now and we saw multiple examples where they just didn't have anybody to throw the ball to. And so you have that, you have a quarterback that struggles to throw the ball accurately, especially with man coverage, right? Like you're, you're throwing into tighter windows in those situations and he's just not the guy you want doing that right now. And and so I think you're going to see a lot of teams go pretty heavy on man coverage, I would guess, and, and just like force them to, to get open and force Jimmy to make these tougher throws because they're not showing that they can do it. Well, the cyclone bomb continues. I hope you weren't expecting a cheery Patreon video, but here we are (laughs) driving us to drink. I'm glad you're paying for the beer. Thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, go Niners.